Hey folks, Phil Zito here, and in today's video, we are going to be continuing along with our BAS Bootcamp. So the previous videos, we've talked through what a BAS is, we've talked about inputs and outputs, and today's video, and probably a couple more videos after this, we're gonna start to dive into electrical fundamentals. So when I'm teaching electrical fundamentals, I like to teach it from our area of influence as a BAS contractor. Yeah, sure, we could learn about uh, high voltage. We could learn all about um, all sorts of things related to volt amperes and all that. But let's just kind of focus in on like the really, really basics that you need to understand as a BAS contractor in order to just like get your basic job done. So first thing I like to do is kind of start with the top, which is this thing called a transformer, right? XFMR. And a transformer is going to have a primary and it's gonna have a secondary. So the primary is gonna be the source voltage that's kind of coming into it, right? And then the, uh, the secondary is going to be the voltage that is coming out of it. Now, what typically will happen for us is we'll have 120 volts AC coming in, and then we'll have 24 volts AC coming out. And when I say AC, we're talking about alternating current. So if you were to look at current, right, you have positive and negative current. And what alternating current is, is it's current that alternates. Whereas direct current, DC, is current that is either positive or negative. And that will have ramifications on something known as polarity, which we'll discuss in a later video. All right, but for right now, we've got our primary and it's getting 124 or 124, 120 volts AC coming into it and it has 24 coming out of it. And typically what is actually gonna be coming out of it is going to be a hot and a common, okay? And we could even do it this way and this is actually what I'm gonna do here. We're gonna use red for our hot and black for our common. And these are gonna to go to our controller, right? And our controller is going to have a common and it's gonna have a hot. And that hot is going to be like where the power starts coming in, and then the common is where it returns to the transformer. This path, which I'm gonna do in blue, is called a circuit, okay? So we see right here that the power comes in, right, it's coming in, going into the controller, and then coming out of the controller. And that's the path of our electricity, that's a complete circuit. Now, now that we have kind of that fundamental in place, let's talk about, you know, we had mentioned relays. So let's talk about relays and how they work. All right, so when we are going and utilizing a controller, and we're gonna focus on outputs in this video, and we're gonna focus on relays, and then we're gonna get to inputs, and then we're gonna get to other more complex things like VA sizing of transformers, things like that. But when we are dealing with our controllers, most of the time, we are going to have to turn something on. So if we were to go and actually turn on what is called a coil, in order to energize a set of contacts, that would be something that we quite often do. And what we do basically is our controller has like a digital output and it's sourcing 24 volts. So this would be an internally sourced output and it would go and energize this thing over here in red, this coil. And what this coil does is then, depending on what kind of relay you have, is it causes these contacts to change state. Because right now you see this circuit over here that I'm gonna circle in blue. This circuit right here, it actually is a broken circuit. It's an open circuit, meaning that if electricity tried to go from here to here, it would not be able to complete the circuit. Oftentimes, when we are going and energizing a fan contact, 
or when we're going and energizing a pump or something, what we'll often have is we'll have that rib U1C that I discussed yesterday, that relay in a box, and we will energize it via an output from our controller. So we've got 24 volts. I'm actually going to undo this circle here. So we've got 24 volts coming out, energizing our coil right here, and then coming back to the common. And what that then happens to do is that actually closes. So that's the symbol for a close. The symbol that you saw a second ago, that's open symbol. This is the closed circuit symbol. So it closes. So when someone says normally open, and you see the symbol, that means an unenergized coil, the contact is going to be open. Whereas here, that when the coil's energized, which is red, the contact closes. And that contact closure then allows voltage to source and maybe start a pump, maybe start a fan, etc. But this is something we use all the time. And this also provides us that principle of electrical isolation in that the we do have contacts inside most of our controllers. Like most of our controllers actually have normally open or normally closed contacts as outputs. Problem is, is when we're sourcing the voltage through there, if we source 120, which I realized in yesterday's video, I said, if we source 120 and it's only rated for 120, and that was a misspeak, if we source 120 and it's only rated for 24 volts, then that could cause an issue. So I want to recap because this is a short video and we're going to have several of these, but I want to recap on kind of the concepts we discussed here. Okay, so what we've discussed so far is that we have transformers. Transformers have a primary side, right? So we have a transformer and our transformer has a primary side, which is the incoming voltage. Typically for us, it's 120 volts, although it could be, you know, 480 I don't know why I put volt amps there. Uh, I meant to put AC and I put, I, I don't, whatever. <laughs> We're just going to erase that. I started down a path there. 120 volts AC or 480 volts AC. And then we have our secondary, which is typically 24 volts AC. And as I mentioned, right, we have, and I'm going to erase this right real quick. Oops, there we go. We have coming out of this, we have our hot and we have our common and that goes to our controller that completes a circuit. And then this power that's coming into our controller can then be used to drive a coil, which when energized, right? So we have our normally closed or normally open contacts here. When energized will cause the state of a contact to change. So this is a very basic principle, but it's something you're going to use all the time, which is, you know, we have our primary high voltage source coming into our transformer, and then that goes out as a low voltage source, typically 24 volts AC, and that 24 volts AC is going to have a hot, typically indicated by the red wire, and it's going to then have a common that typically indicated by the black wire coming out of the controller. And then that controller can use that power source that it has to go and external or internally source voltage to a coil, right? It's internally sourcing voltage to a coil, which then can be energized to change state of a contact. So there you have it. That's the first primer in electricity. Tomorrow, we're going to get more into resistance. We're going to start to talk about Ohm's law and look at the relationship between resistance and current and voltage and why that matters to you. Thanks a ton for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. Thanks a ton and have a great day.